Hi, welcome back to the Lum Room. And you're probably wondering, you know, what is this uh, sewer tops, the tops to the sewer. And I don't know, maybe I told you this story before, but once you get older, you like to tell stories more. And also you forget which story you told people and you didn't tell people. So I apologize if I told you this story before. But, you know, you, I used to go to Mongolia a lot uh, to work in the different libraries there, which have uh, hundreds of thousands of great Buddhist books. One of the greatest, some of the greatest Buddhist libraries in the world. And so I remember one night we, we were coming home from the library. We were walking to the hotel and it was dark and they didn't have a lot of street lights. And uh, I could see uh, in front of us on the street, uh, there was something moving, you know, and I looked closer and there's this uh, sewer lid, you know, and it was opening, you know, and there was a small animal coming out of the sewer in the, in the dark, dark night, you know, and then uh, the animal came out and the sewer lid fell down. And then this animal rushed past me, you know, and almost touched me, you know. And then I was, I was like, oh, you know, and I asked my friend, my, my Mongolian friend, I said, what, what, what kind of animal is that? You know, is a wolf is living in the, in the sewer or something? And they can open the sewer? And, and he said, no, 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 that's not a wolf. That's a, a kid. That's a human kid, you know. And I'm like, what? And he said, yeah, that's a, that's a kid, you know, that's a wild kid. We call them wild kids. And I said, what's a, a wild kid? And he said, well, if, if your parents die in, in Mongolia and if you don't have any other family, uh, you don't have money, then you will live in the sewer. You can live in the sewer, you know. I said, why, why they live in the sewer, in the stinky sewer, you know? And they say, it's, it's cold here, Gensula. The sewer is warm. You know, the sewer has shelter. Uh, the snow, not the, you're not going to sit in the snow. Uh, and the poopoo -poo makes the sewer warm. And it's a warm place to stay, so the kids will stay there, you know. And I said, well, what? But that didn't look like a kid. That looked like a wolf or something. He said, yeah, they are wild. They are really wild. And he said, don't get close to them, you know. Uh, they will bite you. I'm like, what? And he said, yeah, those are wild kids. They cannot talk. They, they cannot speak. Uh, they didn't have parents, and no one taught them to. No one taught them to live like a human. So they are living like a wolf. They are living like an animal, you know. And if you get close to them, they will bite you. And uh, they are like wild animals, and they don't talk, and they steal things from people. In fact, uh, one of our staff members had a had their bag stolen by one of these wild kids, and uh, well, I was like, wow, you know, that's so strange. And then I started to think, uh, I, I would be like that if my mom didn't train me, you know? If my mom didn't teach me how to talk, how to eat, how to put on clothes, then I would be one of these naked uh, children running around and biting tourists in Mongolia, you know? I would be the same. I'm not special. I'm not different from them. And that's what Pabon Kupiche is going to say next, okay? So... Teramase means not only did she take care of us uh, and watch over us that we talked about in the last session, you know, hundreds of times a day she saved our life. Kamba Zupat Sunche. She taught us to take our first steps, okay? You know, and I, I remember, it's so funny, I remember Halloween night and my, my mom, or my dad is teaching me how to chew gum. And how to blow a bubble. And, and they were so excited. My mom and dad, like, look, he's blowing a bubble. You know, and I was like, you know. And uh, they teach you everything, you know. They teach you how to take your first steps. Tambawa means uh, they teach you how to say your first words. And I remember my parents being really happy when I learned a new word or something. Satang, uh, how to eat. Uh, with a fork and a spoon and not to eat with, or chopsticks and, and don't eat with your fingers. But your parents taught you that, okay? Even those, forget university, forget reading uh, Cervantes or Shakespeare, you know, uh, just to eat with your, without your fingers. They taught you everything, okay? Sun, sun means everything from that up, 
Okay, tsunni. Rim shin, here's the lim, rim in lamrim, which means one by one they taught you how to step, how to talk. Lape, they taught you. Okay. Tanda droduk tang tam mawasokla topa mepa tijung. And that's why nowadays you and I can stand up and walk or sit down politely or tamma, we can have a conversation with somebody. Topa me, tok me, asanga, asanga. What's it got to do with talking or eating? Uh, it's fluent. It's, uh, we don't have to think about it. You know, you just uh, start talking. Topa me, asanga. This topa me means, uh, how do you say that? Without any hesitation. Yeah, you can just start a conversation. You don't, you know, that's, that's all due to them teaching your first words. And the fact that you can topa me walk downstairs and get in your car is because they taught you how to take your first step. Okay, so don't forget. Okay. Uh, now they're going to talk about a special subject, uh, which is the financial burden that you were for your parents. Okay. And, uh, and it's bad. It's a lot. You know, I, I was coming here to the college. I saw a lady driving uh, out of the parking lot. She, she had two or three kids in the back. And the car was messed up, you know, the car was old and broken. And I feel a little bit, you know, offended, you know, I'm like, why you drive this stupid car? And then I look at the kids and I realize, ah, oh, that's why you drive this stupid car, because you have kids and you can't afford it, you know. You're not like me, you know, I, I can spend, all, I can buy a nice car, but, but she can't. Why? I think the average cost of a kid in the United States is $30,000 a year. You get three kids in the car, I don't care what kind of job you have, you can't have a new car, <laughs> you know, you can have a junky old car, because that's 90000 a year sitting in the back, you know, that's unbelievable. And uh, par of course, young people don't think about that before they have a baby, but um, it's expensive, it's extremely expensive, and you can't say don't eat this week, or you can't say, you know, we're going to send you to school without shoes. You don't have a choice. You have to spend that money, okay? So, ngulka kang tsamlaan, to make a single dollar, okay? Ngulka means a single silver piece, piece of silver. Uh, she did whatever she had to do. And, and I remember, you got that next picture, Seiji? Where is that? Yeah, it's the garbage truck. You know, I remember my mom, uh, she was, I remember what she did to make money, okay? So in my mom's time in America, uh, my dad was not there. My dad, they split up. And my mom, suddenly she has to make money. And she never made money before. And she didn't know how to make money. Because this is 1950s, 60s uh, housewife. She done, not supposed to work. Then suddenly she has to make money, and she's like, oh, my God. And there's two jobs for women at that time. It's a secretary or a school teacher. So she decided to be a school teacher. And the pay is less than a garbage man. I remember one day, we are complaining, you know, me and the four brothers. We are complaining. Mom, you know, why can't we have a, the more expensive breakfast cereal? And she's like, we can't afford it, you know. And we're like, Mom, why not? Our friends have uh, expensive breakfast cereal. She's like, she's like, and then the garbage truck came by, and she said, look at that guy in the garbage truck. And we're like, yeah. And she says, he makes more than a school teacher in America. You understand? She said, I'm doing my best, you know. This is the only job I can get. And, and I can't, I'm, I'm struggling for every single dollar, okay. And that's the way it was, okay. Okay. Uh, and moms will do anything they have to do to make that money, including prostitution or whatever they have to do. Uh, doing any bad thing, they will do it. Uh, for their kids, they will do it. You know, There's many stories in the sutras of mothers who turn to prostitution to, to support their kids or stuff like that. I, a, a woman will do any kind of degrading and disgusting job 
if it means that she can give money to her children. And your mom did the same thing, and my mom did the same thing. Okay? Dikpadan Tamyan, she doesn't care what people say about her. Uh, she, she won't listen to other people's opinion. If she can make a dollar for you, she will make a dollar for you. Dungyal K to say, and she doesn't care how hard she has to work. My mom worked, oh my gosh. She came home from teaching all day, and then she had about three hours of work after that uh, to check the papers. And she didn't go to bed until midnight or something, and then she got up in the morning and did it again. And they don't care, because they care about you. They don't care about themselves. I think my mom killed herself working, and she did it for you. She, she doesn't care. Uh, she she work herself to death just for you. Uh, and then uh, she when she gets money, she just thinks about spending it on you. She doesn't think about spending it on herself. I remember uh, in the summer we went to the ocean. I said, "Mom, I need a surfboard." You know, and she's like, "Are you kidding? You know, we don't have any money." And I'm like, Mom, I want a surfboard, you know. And she says, okay. You know, and I don't know where she took the money from her, from buying her own clothes for work or something, and she'd buy a surfboard, you know. And I'll never forget it, okay. We didn't have the money, but she she took it from someplace, and she, and she she found it. They will always find the money for their kids, right? Okay. Pu Pumola Kim Bopa. Then... Uh, Later, and this is very common all over the world, uh, someone told me yesterday, uh, uh, what was it? Oh, yeah, it's a good friend of ours. He's already planning for his son's house. His son is two months old. He's like, yeah, we're going to buy a house. We're going to buy him a house. We're going to get a mortgage. We're going to take care of the mortgage. He's going to have a house. You know, when he gets to 30, we'll give him the house. I'm like, oh, my God, the kid was born two months ago. And the parents are already planning the mortgage uh, just for the kid, just to give the house to the kid, okay? Uh, so your mom, Kim Bokba means they set you up with your own house for your own family. Namar Zangba means uh, for girl children in Tibet, they arranged for your husband, they got you married to a good one. Uh, like my wife. Rab uh, Chume Gor. Chuk, or they took you to the monastery and made you into a monk or a nun. They, they, and in Tibet, it was one out of six people was ordained. A million people were ordained uh, by the time of the Cultural Revolution. Okay? Uh, they took whatever money they had and they, they spent it on you. So try to, you know, I know in the modern world, uh, there's a lot of people who feel like their parents let them down, they didn't treat them nice, their parents were... Why do you think your parents were fighting? They were stressed out. Why? Because they're trying to make money for you. Yeah, they fought. Yeah, they drank alcohol. Yeah, they smoked cigarettes. Because they were exhausted uh, taking care of you. <laughs> okay. So don't, don't be so righteous about your parents, okay? If, if they were tired and grumpy and fighting... And drinking, uh, it's because of you, okay? So if you don't have anything to feel bad about, you can feel bad about that. All right. Uh, your mom used every ounce of her brains and every ounce of her physical energy to find food and housing for you. That was her thing. She didn't do anything else. Uh, most of her time was spent trying to find these things for you. Say, She just struggled to do that. And on the other hand, she's trying constantly to protect you from yourself. Right? Don't take those drugs. You know, you know I don't know. Did you have this lecture from your mom? Look, you can have a girlfriend, okay, you can have sex, but please learn about birth control. <laughs> you know, like, you know, and she tried to protect you from yourself, you know. Uh, uh, you know, like with the drug, my mom would say dr about drugs, she said, look, no, you can't hurt yourself, you know. It's, it's, I don't want you to hurt yourself. Uh, so anyway, Dei Shindu Paso Semjen Shen Tam Che Ki Kyang, Jen Ki Kyang. 
Then uh, there are other people in your life. Your, your father did a lot. Your uncles and aunts, your grandparents, uh, your school teachers. Start to expand the awareness of how many people took care of you and tried to keep you out of trouble. Uh, even if you don't count all the times that you were in a different body, like a bird or a, a fish, uh, even just in your human bodies, your human mom and your human dad took care of you countless times. And they, and they did, they, they purposely and voluntarily took on the struggle to support you, okay? And of course it's an emotional struggle, of course it's a physical struggle, but it's a financial struggle also. And they, they decided to, to do it. They decided to have a baby, mostly, okay? They'd say, Yan, Tate, Ma, Shin, Chin, Ki, Kyang. And you're even, Tate, Ma, In those past lives, your present mother did the same thing, okay? My mom, who struggled in this life to make money for me in this life, also struggled to make money for me in my past lives. They should do Shin, Ma, Che, Kap, Kyang, Read that. And there were many, then you can start going, expanding the circle of your gratitude to the times when this same woman took care of you in a different body, like a horse, okay, or a wild, or like a deer or something, okay? So, so now, recognizing that in a human body, you know, she struggled for the money for you in a human body countless times. Let's start going to the other bodies in which she did the same for you. And, and Pabon Kompiché takes the example of a, of a wild animal, like a deer, okay? Uh, in that wild animal's body, De Mar Chete, she served as your mom, Chambele Tanang, and she showed you the same kind of love that this human mothers did. Tanang, uh, even down to Che Dakba means to lick your body with her tongue. And we have a picture of that, I think. Uh, I was looking for a picture of a, of a cow licking her calf, but I ran into this camel picture, and it was kind of more powerful, you know. So this little camel was just born, and the mom is licking the 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 liquids off of the baby uh, at just after birth, you know. And so she has this instinct, and so try to think of how many millions of times your mom licked the afterbirth off of you uh, as an animal. Okay, Dr. Sun Cheki Jambakyang, and that was the beginning of her career of affection for you for a whole lifetime as a camel, for example. Okay, all right. Let's discuss times when your mom took care of you as a bird. Okay, you were a baby bird and she was a mom, mama bird. Okay, ma check up. Kyang, dawa chik sam shope room. She spent a month keeping you warm, both as an egg and as a, as a chick. Okay, so in the nest, she laid there uh, with her wings purposely covering the egg even before you were born. Then after you were born, room here means like, uh, what do you call that inner fire? Tumo. It means tumo. Yeah, she kept you warm with her body warm. Okay, uh, both as an egg and after you came out of the egg. Uh, me, Yupa Soki. And if... And I, I remember this. Uh, I, so I had a kid who lived next door to us when I was a small kid. And he was bad. He was just a bad kid. He was a mean kid. And he would say, let's go uh, kill birds, you know. And I went with him once. And uh, he would take a small gun, BB gun, or, or uh, something like that. And he would go find nests. And... Uh, he would shoot the bird, and 
if the bird had kids in the nest, she will not fly. She will cover the babies and she will die. She will purposely die. She knows she's going to die, but she will cover the babies and she will wait for the gun, you know. And um, so that's what he's talking about here. Uh, even if somebody comes up to threaten the bird with a yukpa. Yukpa here means danda. This is the Tibetan for danda, uh, yukpa. Uh, if someone comes up with a club and, and threatens to beat, to kill the bird, the mother herself, Rangyi, has a shopa. She has wings. She can pour, she can fly away, but she stays and she covers the baby, okay, with her body. Pula chene. Here's the che in Rang Chenzin, Tim, uh, in the words, uh, sorry, Seiji's text, which is? Self, yeah, self cherishing. Pula che, to the child. She has self cherishing for the child. So kyang yawandor. Yawandor means she will abandon her own life uh, at, if it means protecting her child. Even a bird will do that. Soon. Chine bu chiglai manye. If you both survive long enough and she can't find food and she finds one worm. And here's our picture. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, means even if she finds a single worm, if she can't find any more than a single worm, she will, she will give it to her child. She will give it to the baby and she will go hungry. Okay, a mother bird will go hungry and she will give the, the single bug to her kid. Okay, uh, What's this so mean, you guys, you nuns? She will sow the child with the bug. Rakshita. Uh, sustain. And this is the so and sojong, uh, which means to fix your vows or sustain your vows. Okay. All right. Data yang tangre tangi tsam mimba. It's not that your mom did that for you once. It's not that your mom protected you once or twice from at the cost of her life. Ne kap chan tam che du tingi kyambala. Changi Micha, every single lifetime that she was your mom, she protected you, and you cannot count the times that she died for you. Okay? All right. My Golok Ijapa Sheik. Golok is a place in East Tibet famous for bandits, you know, and Golok, which is a tribal name, is almost means bandit. Okay, and uh, Jakpa means abandoned. You know, someone who who robs travelers. Okay, that's their specialty. Okay, Jakpa. Tashigla Chitaba. They were having a fight. He stabbed uh, somebody's horse with a big knife. And Towala uh, Tepte. Tiu means a baby horse. What do you call? A foal. Hlungwa. Uh, this is the Hlungwa that you see in the monks and nuns' vows, which means downfall. Tungwa or Hlungwa. So what happened to the cult? The full Hlungwa. It fell out of the womb. Uh, the, the bandit cut open the stomach of another guy's horse, and then a, a baby foal came out, cult. Shikama means in, in the throes of death. Okay, uh, while she was dying, the mother horse was licking the, the baby as she was dying. She was worried that the baby wouldn't be clean or something. So she's dying and she's licking the baby. Tiula uh, Che Dok, there's the same Che Dok we had before. Lick with her tongue. Jampa, she had Jampa for the fall. She showed her love. Tongne, when the Jakpa Tongna, he chupa, doji chupa, his jakpe le, his career as a bandit. He, yeah, he stopped his career as a bandit. He said, God, this is mean. I, I can't do this anymore. So 
I guess in Tibet it's a big deal. I guess it's like a car salesman starting to tell the truth or something. <laughs> uh, but he's like, I can't do this anymore. You know, he gave up his jockey, his bandit career. Okay. Uh, chum, chum, he gave it up. Chum, and and Pabon Kumbhiche loves to tell uh, little stories that he's heard around Tibet. And I think if you're teaching Lomrim, uh, you should also tell your own stories. That's, a, that's part of the tradition. You know, whatever stories happen in your life, that you can use to illustrate the Lam Rim, like the Mongolian wild kid story, then use it. It's okay. It's good. Okay. It makes it more real for your audience. They don't have robbers on horseback to talk about. Okay. I hope. Okay. They do do they run yinla. What if that baby horse was you? What if the baby horse that the Golok bandit chieftain saw getting licked was you. Tade shendi min ngepachiya. Min ngepachiya means there's no certainty at all that you were not that baby horse. You yourself was not the baby horse that Babon Kurmbache is talking about. There's no certainty that you and I were not the baby horse. And there's no certainty that someone around you now was not the mother dying horse who licked you. There's no certainty that we are not the horses that Babon Kurmbache is describing in his story. Uh, so we've established that your mom struggled to take care of you financially, emotionally, educationally, uh, logistically in this life, okay? You have to contemplate how every other living being has also done the same for you, okay, in, in many lifetimes, in countless lifetimes, okay? It's a sweet uh, meditation to do. It's a sweet practice to do. Uh, you know, we, sometimes we feel depressed. I was depressed yesterday. I was sick. And, uh, you know, stuff happens in our life, and we feel kind of sad about life or things aren't going so well and it's always a nice you have the option if you're a Lam Rim participant, if you've studied Lam Rim or if you've heard Lam Rim you always have the option to just sit and think about the horse and the baby horse and, and to think that everybody around you has lifted you uh, as their baby horse and I think you'll find that these long rim meditations will make you very cheerful and grateful to other people. So then the long rim has an immediate effect. When you're feeling depressed or you feel low self-esteem, uh, just imagine getting licked by everybody in the room uh, <laughs> when you were a baby horse. And it's true, you were. And try to cheer up a little bit. I mean, every, we have all taken care of each other. We have all given up our lives for each other countless times. So life is not so serious and life is not so bad. Okay, see you in the next long room.